Welcome back. Uh, so this is the second part of today's lecture. It's about uh, mathematical induction. I'm going to give some examples, illustrative examples. And through those examples, I want to kind of illustrate three kind of main points related to mathematical induction. Okay. Um, so the first one is um, I'm also going to start using the shorthand uh, MI to mean mathematical induction. Okay. So the first uh, point I want to make is mathematical induction is not always <coughs> about equations. Okay? So I remember after I learned mathematical induction in high school, one thing I walk away from it is mathematical induction is always about a summation and then there's a formula. Okay? So the first one I want to clarify is is not always about equation. I'm going to give an example. Suppose, example one, suppose we have a 2 to the power n times 2 to the top power n kind of grid minus <coughs> top right corner. So let me illustrate what it means. Is So when n is equal to 1, it means this, 2 by 2, take out the top right corner. When n is equal to 2, it means this, 4 by 4, but take out the top right corner. So that's what I mean by 2n times 2n grid. And then when n is equal to 3, that's basically the chessboard, a by a, but take out the top right corner. Okay. So I want the statement s of n to be two n times two n, basically this this board, uh, minus top right corner board. Okay always be covered by this without overlap so I'll explain what without overlap means so as you can see this is a statement about a positive integer n but it's not an equation it doesn't have any equation to it okay so let's just kind of talk about what it means uh, s of 1 definitely is true because it's itself <coughs> so this is s of 2 uh, I want to illustrate what does cover by mean so this is 1 This is another, and then you can also also do this, and then you can do this, and then finally you have this. So as you can see, this one can be covered by one, two, three, four, five, five of those. Can I get a sign? Does everyone understand what the question is? Okay. So uh, because of this, we already know, again, number one, S1. In fact, we also did S2 as well.
Uh, I want to say without mathematical induction, uh, is it easy? Okay, Let, let's just kind of go into it. Let's see, uh, as, let's take step number two. Assume SK is true for some positive integer k. And now we want to show that sk plus 1 is true as well. If we can do that, then that means we are quote unquote done. We've proven this to be for all positive integer n. Now, uh, when sk is true, what does it mean? What it basically means is uh, 2 to the power k, 2 to the power k, this <coughs> can be covered by, by this, right? Now we want to basically show if you could do that, then, as, then one size bigger, 2 to the k power plus 1, can also be covered by that. Uh, I want to give everyone a 20 seconds to think about how to do that because once I started writing and drawing, it will become very obvious. Here's the trick, okay? Uh, you need to rotate this a little. <coughs> so each of this is 2 to the power k. Four pieces of this is it is basically from here. But if you rotate it this way, you basically found that find that you just need to add one piece here, and then that's your cover. Okay, uh, this because you, you we are putting two of this stack up. So the side of this is now 2 to the power of k plus 1, because it's now twice the length. We just rotate this clockwise by 90 degree, keep it here, and then this one is this one, rotate counterclockwise by 90 degree, and then this one just kind of keep it here, and then you see basically there's a, there's a, there's a hole which is in the shape of this. So think about the three square put together, we know this one can be covered by this, by the assumption. This one can be, this one can be, this one can be. And there's this additional spot that we need to cover by one additional piece. So because of that, uh, we just show that SK plus 1 is true as well. And then we basically say by mathematical induction, S of n is true for all positive integers n. Can I get a show of sign? Um, how does FN feel about this example? Okay. Uh, again, the reason I picked this example is I want to be very clear that mathematical induction is not about equation. It's not just about equation. 
Um, in fact, it's usually more useful uh, in situations where the statement you try to prove is not equation. Um, so let's move on to the second example to illustrate my second point. Now the second point I try to make is I want to say it is actually a little harsh, okay? But MI is kind of brute force. It's a brute force approach. In a lot of cases. Um, I'll kind of take everyone through that example. And then I'll try to come back to this to explain what I mean by what what I mean by MI is 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 basically a good force. Okay. So the, the statement, the example, example number two, that we try to use in this is as follows. Two to the power n is equal to C C N zero. Plus Z, C M one, C M two, plus all the way to C M N minus one, plus C N to the N. So this C is the combination, is the subset. Uh, the first one is C M zero. So let's do. Let's try to prove this by. Uh, so this is for n greater than or equal to one uh, integer. So is this equation clear to everyone? What I meant. Okay. So uh, let's use mathematical induction. Number one. Uh, well, we also want to say let s of n be this so for S1 left hand side is equal to 2 to the power 1 is equal to 2 and right hand side is equal to uh, So S1 is pretty uh, straightforward. Um, so therefore, S1 is true. Now, uh, number two, we'll have uh, some algebra involved. Okay. For S2, what we want to say is assume S of k is true for some positive integer k. So what does it mean? What it means is uh, we know k is an integer, we don't know what that is, but we need to trust or assume This is true, and again, we are going to call this assumption to be an asterisk. Now we want to prove S of k plus 1 is true. Now this time, we will basically say that left-hand side 
is now equal to 2k plus 1, which is basically 2 times 2 to the power k. Everyone with me so far? So it's basically 2 to the power k plus 1. And now we apply this, we substitute the 2 to the power k by this chunk of summation. So it's now basically 2 times 2. So the next step is the, the trick. Okay. Um, So what have, what have I done? So instead of times 2, I just kind of write out twice. So this is, we say 2 times this, right? So I write it once in the first line, and then I write it again in the second line, but I just kind of shift it by 1. So it is still the summation. It's still this kind of k plus 1 many terms, but I just kind of write it twice instead of multiply by 2. Is everyone with me so far? Okay, so I'm just going to create something here uh, in the middle. One of this term is so this is k r plus one. The bottom one is r. Just to denote that the top one is always because we shift it by one. So the second value here is always one bigger than zero. Okay. Uh, we are almost done. Uh, once you observe um, some pattern, this one is actually this. Because when the second parameter is zero, it doesn't matter what the first one is is always equal to 1. The last one, I'm calling it uh, CKK, but then we can actually call it CK plus 1 and K plus 1 as well, because this is also always equal to 1. Okay. Now the, the, the last part is, is an equation that we did not talk about in class. And I'm going to show it to you. Basically, this plus this uh, So I need to, to show you this. But once I show you this, then this is basically become... Once I show you this, again, I need to show you this. But then once I show you this, this part is basically now C, K plus 1, 0, K plus 1, 1, and then all the way, plus k plus 1, k plus 1, which is the right hand side. Do you agree? Like once, if I can show you this, 
then it's basically now the right hand side of what we try to prove. Because when n is equal to k plus 1, it's k plus 1, 0, k plus 1, 1, k plus 1, 2, all the way to k plus 1, k plus 1. Originally, I have k terms here, k many terms here, but because I shifted it by 1, so now I also have 1, 2, 3, and then all the way to k, and then k plus 1 many terms here. Can I get a show of sign? How's everyone feeling about this so far? Okay. Um, up until this part is okay, correct? No? Okay. Uh, let me see. Mm, let's kind of rewind. Let's rewind to here. Um, so we assume this formula is true for k. So therefore we have this. And now we want to show that this formula is also true when n is equal to k plus 1. We start from the left hand side. The left hand side is now 2 to the power of k plus 1. And 2 to the power of k plus 1, we can write as 2 times 2 to the power of k. And now in mathematical induction, we always need to apply what you assume. You assume the formula was true until it's equal to k, right? So therefore, you can basically replace this by this formula. By saying this is now equal to 2 times this many. Okay. Um, so this is here, 2 times this many term. Uh, and what I do is I'm just going to write it out to say, OK, this is the same. I write it once, and then I also write it twice. So instead of multiply by 2, I just kind of write it out twice. How's it feeling about this, writing it twice? Okay. Now, um, let's take a moment to think about, we want to show this <laughs> very long summation to be equal to k plus 1 here. The right hand side of all of this, when n is equal to k plus 1. So what we want to show is this very ugly summation is equal to c k plus 1 0, c k plus 1 1, c k plus 1 2, c k plus 1 3, all the way to c k plus 1 k plus 1. This is what we try to show. Okay. Uh, and the reason I write it out like this is because once you group this term one by one, you'll basically see the following. Let me just kind of show this. This is actually not very complicated. Okay, let me just show this first. So this one is k times k minus one. times all the way to k minus r plus 1. And in the bottom is what we call the r plus 1 factorial. r plus 1, r, r minus 1, all the way to 1, which is the first term. Okay. The second term is k, k minus 1, all the way to k minus r. Okay. 
Okay. And then you multiply r plus 1 to the bottom here and the top. So here, the only thing I change is I multiply r plus 1 to the bottom and to the top. So this part doesn't change. And then the top now has this additional r plus 1 that I, will, I multiply to the denominator. So that those are both of those fractions the bottom is r plus 1 factorial. And now, the last step is, I need to pull the first r terms out. <laughs> uh, basically, the, the, the last step is, uh, once you, at the bottom, I'm just going to write r plus 1 factorial. At the top, if I pull k, times k minus 1, times k minus 2, all the way to k minus r plus 1. Then the left hand side, the only thing left is k minus r, and the right hand side, what is left, is r plus 1. So you get the magical k plus 1 at the top that we were looking for. So now the top becomes k plus 1 times k times k minus 1 all the way to k minus r plus 1 which is basically k plus 1 r plus 1 uh, I know it looks complicated but it is algebra so first when you explain it more hmm? first when you explain it more Say that again? I like the first one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I, su I succeeded. Um, I succeeded in showing everyone that this is brute force. Okay. So that it will be easier for me to make the more important point. Okay. Because of that, what, what I just proved, what you basically on here is, what is left? Is basically the right hand side k plus 1, 0. Again, because the first one is, whenever the second parameter is 0, it's always equal to 1. k plus 1, 1. k plus 1, k plus 1. And this is equal to the right-hand side. And we will basically be able to say, how to do all of this, by mathematical induction, the Sn is true for all n. Okay. Now, um, remember, <laughs> what I try to do in this B is to show everyone that this is brute force. This is tedious. I know I'm a little bit harsh, but it is actually not a very smart way of doing this. Okay? Uh, does anyone, re did we talk about why this equation is true when we talked about in previous lecture? This one? Instead of doing this mathematical reduction, there's actually a very intuitive way of proving why this equation is true. And I'm going to do it. Okay. Remember, an is equal to the set of n integers. Okay. Now, there's something called a power set of an which is all possible subset of this. Given you've done the homework last week, so remember this, right? So this is all the subset. And do you remember how many 
elements are there in the power set of AN? Does anyone remember? Due to the power of N? Mm -hmm. And the reason is, you basically, to count the power set of N, you basically just have to make N choices. Is each of these elements in or out? In or out? If every element is out, it is empty set. If all the element is in, then it's the set itself. Okay? So this is the left hand side of this equation. Okay. Now, another way to think about it is if I want to ask you how many uh, subset of AN has three elements in it, how many are there? Uh, what's the number of three subsets? of AN. N takes three. N book three? N book three? Yeah. N book three, yeah. So it's C and three. And what about four? Is N pick four, right? What is the biggest subset of AN? How many elements can, can there be? N. 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 Okay. So once you see this, you basically see that the right hand side is a different way of counting it. Empty set, one element subset, two subset and subset. So that's why this equation is true, is because this is basically the two ways of counting it. Um, is this explanation of the equation a lot better? Now, this is the point that I try to illustrate. Uh, mathematical induction can help us prove a lot of uh, difficult statements, uh, but there's usually a better way, not usually, but a lot of occasions, there's a better way of proving the statement. When you do that, in this case, it actually kind of helps you understand what the problem is. And I want to go back to the example from the first half of the class. Do you remember in the example zero, the equation that we try to prove is as follows. Can anyone explain to me why this is true? We prove it. Okay. I'm going to explain to you why this is true. Uh, the left hand side, one, so this is the number of marbles, two, three, four, all the way to the end. So the n rows of marbles, one marble, two marbles, three marbles, four marbles, and then towards the end, there's n. And we want to count how many marbles are there. So this is the representation on the left hand side. Okay. So n is either an even number or an odd number. Okay. So for the purpose of this, let's kind of think about what if n is an even number. So let's assume n is even number for a second, and then after that we can do the same thing uh, for
So n is equal to a bottom number. If you put the bottom row next to the top row, how many marbles are there in the first row? If you put the bottom to here. Mm -hmm. What is how many marbles are there in the second last row? Mm -hmm. If I put it into the second row, then how many marbles are there in the second row? N plus one. So if we just rearrange the model, the marble, so we have one from the first row, and then we have n from the second row, and then we have two, and then we have kind of n minus one. Now I assume that it is n is an even number, okay? So then that means after we do this, in the last kind of k k row, there are k marbles here. And the k plus one marble, which is the one that when we count from the bottom, the k plus one, we move here. We basically now end up with a rectangle. There are k rows, and then each of those has n many marbles. So the number of marbles here is k times 2k plus 1. If you put the number back, k is equal to n divided by 2, right? So therefore, this one is actual n divided by 2, and 2k plus 1 is equal to n plus 1, because k, n is 2k, right? Uh, so this is why this equation is true. Um, if you assume n is an odd number, okay, you can do similar arrangement. But I'll skip that. Um, this is what I try to illustrate. The mathematical induction sometimes can be pretty tedious. And after you've done it, you've done the work. But you might not always have the level of understanding if you really kind of see why the equation is true in the first place. Think about the example of 2 to the power n is n choose 0, n pick 1, n pick 2, all the way to n plus n. I think I lost everyone when I do the algebra. But then once I explain, okay, it is just two ways of counting how many how many subset is in the power set of the first in n integer. And similarly here, we've done it. I think when I do the mathematical induction, kind of most people kind of follow follow, right? But then we didn't really understand why the equation is true. But once we now kind of put it into a square. So a rectangle, it becomes a lot clearer. Okay, so I think that's it for today.